welcome to Mosaic. I'm your host, Susan Shulman Pertnoy. Mosaic is Jewish Federation of Palm Beach County's weekly news magazine, exploring the most critical issues facing Jews here and around the world. You may not know Charles S. Cohen, but if you live in Palm Beach County, chances are you've seen his work. A prominent real estate developer and film producer, he'll talk about booming growth in the Palm Beaches and the part his Jewish identity plays in his success. We'll be right back with Mosaic. You are the book that lights the spark and the hand that passes the torch, the fuel that powers the change that betters the world across town, across oceans, the hand that soothes the spirit that survived the unthinkable. You are there in the darkest of times to strengthen our community. Good Greek, moving in storage. Your superhero movers. Or moving horror stories. Hey, I heard you're looking for a mover. I got a deal for you. Staring on his mover out there! As a former police officer, I've heard all of the moving horror stories. But you can trust me and my pros, and we'll have you saying, Opa! Call Star Star Greek. Good Greek, moving in storage. Your superhero movers. Morse Life Memory Care is making a difference in the lives of our residents with innovative programs that offer them a more rewarding future. Our goal is to give our residents more time. Time for programs that help cognition, for favorite foods in our open kitchen any time of day, for fun with new friends, and time for family, free from care and worry. Most importantly, for the compassion and dignity they deserve. Joining us today is Charles Cohn, business leader, successful real estate developer, patron of the arts, film producer, film distributor, and a real Renaissance man. Welcome to Mosaic, Charles. Thank you so much. Before we talk about your accomplishments, I want to know a little bit about your background. I know you come from a close-knit family, but and I also heard that you grew up in a traditional Jewish home. Tell us about that. I did. I grew up about 25 miles outside of Manhattan in a small town, Harrison, New York. And I went to public school from kindergarten to uh, 12th grade. I was bar mitzvahed uh, when I was 13 at the Jewish Community Center of Harrison. And well, you're uh, a JCC person. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And uh, I went to Hebrew school. I went to regular school. And uh, I've always stayed connected to my Jewish uh, my Jewish education and my Jewish roots. Did you grow up in a religious home? Did you celebrate Shabbat on uh, Friday night? Yes, but not in the way that people do today or the way that my wife and I with our children do. But we always, I always had dinner at home. It was always roast chicken with my mother and my father and my sister um, every Friday night. Would you say you have a strong sense of Jewish identity? Yes. Why is that so important? Because my last name is Cohen. It's hard to avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't escape it. And you, it's okay. You're a parent of four children. Yes. Tell me about your family dynamic today. Well, I'm recently married a second time, about well, 15 years ago. And uh, we have two young boys who are 11 and 13. We just had a 13-year-old bar mitzvah in October. Mazel tov. Thank you. And I have a, a son who is 31 and a daughter who is 36 who's married. And she has two, I have two grandchildren. My grandson, who's three, was born on my birthday. Oh, wow. So That's really It was blessing. a special day. So how do you impart your Jewish identity and values to your children? Well, I think the uh, family meals are very important. Uh, the uh, high holiday uh, uh, attendance at Temple are important. And I think it's, it's more than, it's the life you lead and the um, values you embrace that I think communicate the real message on what we are as Jewish people in, in today's very complicated world. Your grandfather, Cohen, immigrated from Russia to the United States 
and began his life here selling things out of a push cart. That's correct. Your family has achieved the American dream. How did somebody go from such humble beginnings to such a wonderful real estate dynasty? I, I know you have a great story. Can you share that? Well, my grandfather was born in Russia, and he had deserted from the Russo-Japanese War. I think he had been wounded. And he went to London and uh, stayed with some relatives there, and then, uh, I guess, saved enough money to come to America, to New York. Uh, sometime after that, he met my grandmother, who had been born in America, had been born in New York, and she was quite an accomplished woman. She passed away when I was an infant, so I, I really didn't get to know her, but I knew enough to know that she worked in a bank as a secretary. That's unusual. Very much so, and that when my grandfather and her moved down to Virginia, they had bought a, um, a wagon with a horse, and he would sell uh, uh, dry goods from the cart. And then um, my two older uncles uh, and my father were uh, in the haberdashery business. So they had three stores. And my grandmother's maiden name was Baron, B-A-R-O-N. So it became Baron Clothes. Sounded better than Cohen Clothes. And they were in the shipbuilding town of Newport News, where all the shipbuilding workers needed a Sunday suit. And my father used to drive to New York in his car, Manhattan and come back with a thousand suits in his car. And my uncle was a salesman, my father did some selling, but my grandmother did all of the alterations and taught my father how to operate a uh, sewing machine. Oh my goodness. Which he, he used. So then how did, you, how did you turn that into a real estate business Well, in they had, uh, uh, it was tough growing up in Newport News. There were very few options, there were very few Jewish people there. And um, there was no real future for them as, as, as Jewish business people. So they decided to sell their stores and they were uh, successful in uh, persuading General Motors to um, give them a Oldsmobile dealership after World War II. And they, uh, they located it in Yonkers, New York, which was in Westchester you know, between Manhattan and, and further the up great Westchester. Location. And they did that for a while, and they really didn't like that business. It was not a good business. So they decided to go into the business of manufacturing buildings. That's the way they described it. And they hired a woman who had had some experience building, who taught them how to build buildings. And they started with six-story brick, uh, what would be called a garden apartment house, suburban apartments. So they did that for a few years. And then there was opportunity in Manhattan. The Third Avenue elevated train had been dismantled and had been removed. And that opened up a lot of development opportunity. And they became the most prolific developers of uh, rental residential real estate on Third Avenue. And one building led to another right. building. And then we went into office buildings. And you know, I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a story that's not dissimilar from anyone's family where, and in this, what's particularly beautiful about this story is the three brothers working together. It is. And as, I equal, as equal partners, each with different skills, some more capable than others, but there was that tremendous sense of taking care of their family. And um, it was quite an experience growing up. I want to hear more about that. that. Yes, sure. we, we must take a break. We'll be right back after this brief message. Coming up. The unique role that Jewish identity plays in the success of prominent real estate developer Charles Coe. You are the book that lights the spark and the hand that passes the torch, the fuel that powers the change that betters the world across town, across oceans, the hand that soothes the spirit that survived the unthinkable. You are there in the darkest of times to strengthen our community. 
Eat, drink, and enjoy Shabbat services at Temple Beth El's Friday night happenings, cocktail reception and kosher dinner at 5.30, followed by our creative, musically-driven Shabbat service. Traditional to progressive, the food and music change every Friday, and you'll want to stay for complimentary dessert. Plan to spend the whole evening here, and you'll walk away and you'll say, wow, we're coming back next week. Welcome at Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat services at Temple Beth El. Open to everyone. Join us every Friday night. Good Greek moving in storage. Your superhero movers. More moving horror stories. Think it's a good idea for your friends to show up with pizza and beer to help you move? Wrong. Amateurs. As a former police officer, I've heard all of the moving horror stories. But you can trust me and my pros, and we'll have you saying... Opa! Call Star Star Greek. Good Greek, moving in storage. Your superhero movers. We're back talking with businessman Charles Cohen. You, I know you graduated from Brooklyn Law School, which is near and dear to my heart. My dad graduated in... We call it the Harvard of Kings County. Yes, he graduated in the class of 54, and I have a daughter presently in her second year there. Oh, fantastic. So it's a very wonderful... How's she finding it? She's great. She's... Uh, well, second year, you're on your way. She's doing, she's doing terrific. Isn't that she's great? Good for you. You must yeah. be proud of her. I'm very proud of her. But how did you wind up at Cohen Brothers Realty? Okay. So I had, from early on, wanted to be involved in the film business. I had made films, short films, when I was a, a teenager. And um, I went to law school. I, I was an undergraduate at Tufts University. I was a English major, which was a good place for me to be because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And, right. and uh, so after that, I decided that having a law degree would be an important thing for me to have. It would give me an opportunity to go in many different directions. And to this day, I believe it's an important education for someone to have, especially if they want to have a business career, because I think it prepares you uh, tremendously over the man in the street that may not have that background. So I had gone to law school in Brooklyn, and I took the real estate courses, because I had always been involved and around real estate from when I was very young. From the time I was um, a, a teenager, 13, 14, I would help out show apartments on weekends, and I would go into the city. And, uh, That's I great know, experience. I don't, I, I, yeah, I don't know if I was paid. <clears throat> it wasn't about that. It was just being able to make a contribution and to learn and to learn how to sell. And uh, I would work summers, and I would type up leases. And so I was always around real estate and uh, you know, understood what I was doing, but not the big picture. That takes a lot of years and a lot of experience to be able to uh, access that experience. So what happened at that point in time was that um, I was graduating from uh, uh, law school, and I had never taken any business courses of any kind, which was probably a mistake in, uh, in retrospect. And uh, I was fortunate in uh, being offered a job opportunity at Chemical Bank in New York in the real estate area. And as an attorney, I was uh, involved in the workouts when their loans are in trouble and they have to be reworked and foreclosed. And so they uh, sent me to deal with all the Jewish borrowers that were in default. <laughs> and um, I did okay with that. And I did so well with the taking over the properties and selling them that they moved me from the legal side into the sales side. So uh, they gave me the greatest compliment I've ever gotten in business, which is that I treated the bank's money like my own. And at that time, my father had uh, approached me and said that he and his uh, brother were developing an office building on Third Avenue, and it would be an opportunity for me if I wanted to come in and learn that business. Otherwise, you know, they probably would have sold their business. And being the opportunist that I am at heart, I thought, that's a great idea. Let me go and do that. And that was in September of 1979. So I think now I'm into my 41st year. Yes, you've taken it to a Run. whole other level. <laughs> Where um, is the time gone? I don't know. But you've expanded outside of New York. Yes. You, you're in California, Texas, and even in South Florida. Yes. And you seem to have um, expanded in the field of design centers. What's that about? Well, I'll tell you what it's about. I, I have a theory, and I'll talk about it tonight at the uh, Federation event, which is that you need to find a niche in order to differentiate yourself from everyone else in, in any particular business. 
And if you stay with that narrower focus and you really work hard, you will become expert at that and you should be able to accomplish some level of achievement. So I had always been interested in design and being in the middle of New York City with so many buildings around me, I had been to the D&D building, the decoration and design building as a client and thought it was just a wonderful, wonderful building with beautiful uh, products and furniture and furnishings, beautiful showrooms. It wasn't just another office building. No, it's very famous. Right, so uh, you know, this now, the D&D &D building became available and I was able to purchase it in October of 1996. So I had already been, uh, uh, you know, for some time doing office building commercial real estate. And one thing led to another. I, uh, in order to learn about that business, which is really part real estate and also part of a design business attracting designers, it's a marketing business, that I went out to the West Coast to what was called the West Week, which was the design market in the Pacific Design Center in March. And I was just knocked out by the real estate. And there were a lot of the same tenants, and one thing led to another, and the, the building had been a um, uh, over leveraged and the mortgage was passed due. So now I was able to draw upon my experience from Chemical Bank trying to work out these problems and I was able to acquire it uh, over 20 years and ago. And it's spectacular. We have to take our final break. Sure. We'll be back with more of Charles Cohen after this brief message. Coming up, the responsibility each of us has in building a successful Jewish Palm Beach. You are the book that lights the spark and the hand that passes the torch, the fuel that powers the change that betters the world across town, across oceans, the hand that soothes the spirit that survived the unthinkable. You are there in the darkest of times to strengthen our community. The Levin Palace at Morse Life is leasing luxury residences for ages 65 plus, offering more than first-class amenities and white glove service. Life at the Palace is like life aboard a luxury cruise ship with more things to enjoy life now. More fabulous food, more fun, more friends, more family, more freedom, more future. Morse Life is more life. Live it at the Palace. Start your fabulous future now. Call 561-537-3402. What's the best kept secret in new cars? It's that you can get a brand new Mini at Bremen Mini Palm Beach for under $21,000, which includes free maintenance for three years. No kidding. Plus, free membership to the fun Mini Club of South Florida for road trips and autocross, and even more with club room social events. Mini is more than just driving. It's about having fun with the Bremen Mini community. Learn about Bremen Mini at BremenMini.com. Minis for under $21,000, free maintenance, Mini Club, and Club Bremen benefits. It's a no-brainer. Bremen Mini is the right choice. We're back with Charles Cohen talking about real estate and all of his endeavors. You have a major presence in our South Florida region. You're, you, you've developed the Dakota building in Fort Redeveloped, redeveloped the Dakota building right. in Fort Lauderdale. And now you're presently involved in our area in West Palm Beach. Why Palm Beach? What, is, what, is that, what meaning does that have for you? I've been coming to Palm Beach since 1970 for 50 years. And I've always wanted to do real estate development in the Palm Beaches. And uh, a few years ago, I uh, came across the Carefree Theater. And, uh, On Dixie Highway. South Dixie, and uh, was successful in acquiring that and have been working towards a redevelopment plan, which I think is very exciting and that ho I hope will come together and uh, Will it include a theater? It will include a uh, six-screen multiplex, yes. You're also in negotiations, or in discussions, I should say, with the city of West Palm Beach about a property called the Tent Site. W what is that about? That's an office site that the city had put up for um, development, and I am working with the city on that plan now. I want to quote you. You've, I've heard you say that people should look at what they do, not as work, but as passion. Elaborate on that. Well, a good friend of mine, a colleague, often says that if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. So what motivates us and the word passion, I think, are intertwined. 
And I just am very excited every day to get up and to attack the day and all the different things I have to do, no matter where they are. And none of it is, is work. And, and people would say to me, well, how do you do all these different things? And it's a very simple answer. If you love what you, what you do, you'll find all the time in the world to be able to spend it the way you need to. Aren't you fortunate? I think well, that's wonderful. It's really. just the way I am. It's the way I grew up, I guess. I want to switch gears a little and talk about your passion for films. Sure. You are, and I want to get this right, you have a production company, yes. a distribution company. Yes. You own movie theaters. As a yes. matter of fact, you recently acquired 52 of the landmark cinemas. Yes. Theaters, um, right. Theaters. And you own a library of ca classic films which you restore. Yes. I know I'm missing something, but where did you get your passion for all this film? Well, my generation was very much influenced by movies and television. And I lived in a small town, and in that town was a one-screen theater that would show independent and art house movies, which you really didn't see on television. And uh, I learned to go to that theater on a regular basis. There wasn't much else to do on the weekends than when I was a little guy. I used to take the bus to White Plains to go to the movies That's there. That's big. And my parents would always take me uh, Friday night to a movie. And uh, so one thing led to another. It just formed my, uh, what, what, what was exciting to me. It was, it was something dynamic. It was very different than everything else that I was doing. Why did you choose to focus on Jewish themes for a number of your films? Because I could connect to them and I thought that the audiences that I wanted to entertain with these films would, would feel the same way I did. Can you share some of the topics that you've covered in that genre? Sure. Well, one of our uh, first films was The Other Son, which I That's thought was a beautiful French film and beautifully made, involving a switched at birth, a Palestinian boy and an Israeli boy, and how they learned living in each other's skin, so to speak, and how their parents dealt with it. I thought it was a beautiful film. That's so current, too. Yes, it is. And what about Red Trees? Red Trees, uh, an artist uh, acquaintance of mine, very talented graphic artist, had come to me and uh, had made a short of about 30 minutes about her experience growing up in, um, in Europe and in South America. And her father had uh, fled. Actually, her father had, uh, her grandfather had invented um, a, 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 a acid, a certain kind of acid um, that, and he, so he was useful to the Nazis, so they didn't kill him. And then when things got a little dicey, he had married a non-Jewish woman. They fled to Brazil. She was born in Brazil. And she wanted to go back to um, uh, the Czech Republic and tell her story. And so the film that she showed me was beautifully shot. The, the, uh, the cinematographer had, had uh, been responsible for a city, city of uh, God, which was a beautifully made film. And she had Timothy uh, Pickett uh, Smith, I think. Um, um, Jade. Pickett Smith? No, Timothy Pickett Smith. I think that's his name. He passed away. Great British actor oh. as a narrator. And mm -hmm. all the elements were there. And so I encouraged her to go back and to flesh it out as a feature film. And it's, it's just a beautiful personal uh, story. But it, ha it, it has a, survival, a lot of real, a survivor survival. And, like, and, and immigrants, right? And multi-generational. Multi right. Yeah. So it's a gem of a film, I think. It's just beautiful film to look at. So I'm in the middle of your film Spiral, which is a very chilling story about anti-Semitism now, actually, in France and in Europe. Right. Uh, why did you choose to feature that issue? Several years ago, it must be close to 10 years ago, I, I thought that there was a need to illuminate what was going on in the world, and in particular in uh, Europe. And I was able to find a very well-respected filmmaking production company in the UK who found a very talented filmmaker. And one thing led to another, and uh, we covered uh, families leaving to go to Israel. Some were going back from Israel to France because they couldn't assimilate as easily as they thought. And I think it, it highlighted a lot of the problems that we read about every day now, Absolutely. especially coming out of France. <coughs> and it's very unfortunate. It is. Our Jewish Federation recently conducted a comprehensive study where we asked our community what was important to them. 
68% of the respondents stated that they're very concerned about anti-Semitism. Why is it so important to bring that to light? Because it's prevalent everywhere, and I guess every few decades it rears its ugly head. And we have to educate people about why it's wrong. In some countries and places there are hate laws that uh, help us fight that. But I think it's about education and trying to get to the root of why there are these Whatever the background and reasons are, I think you need to shine a bright light on it so that people can see it for what it is. But there are plenty of people that don't like anybody. That's true. So, You know, the study also suggested that millennials approach their Judaism from unconventional ways, such as culture, food, wine, and through film. What are, what are your thoughts about using film as a vehicle to connect yourself to Judaism? Well, it's something that I've done uh, on several occasions and something I continue to do as a distributor is to look for films that I think will resonate with the Jewish audience. Jewish audiences, particularly here in South Florida, go to the, go to the movies and they tend to uh, see films that are thought-provoking uh, with mature themes and they want to learn. I think Jewish people are very, um, very much in tune with learning and never ceasing their education. Why is it important to be involved in the Jewish community? Because whatever you do in life, you need to connect to your community. And the Jewish community is a welcoming community as a Jewish person. And it's easier to make friends and accomplish your goals and to do business. And uh, I think that says it all. What do you suggest to pe business people who aspire to making a difference in their community? I think you should find, just as you find a career, and I have this theory that it really takes you 20 years to get good at anything. You just have to hope that you find the right thing that's for you. And it's not supposed to be easy. It work is a four letter word. Hopefully you can find a way to make it fun for yourself and rewarding for yourself. Find something that you really, that you feel that you can master and stick with it and stay with it and you will uh, you'll reach a level of expertise where you will feel good about what you're doing and you will impart that to the people around you and they will recognize you for that and that is called success. Charles, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Mosaic is brought to you by these generous sponsors and underwriters. Learn how you can support Mosaic by visiting jewishpalmbeach.org slash mosaic.